Um, it starts with flour and uh, not just water, but eggs, right? And so today we're gonna make a, uh, um, a what we call ravioli dough. And I'll just show, and we're gonna do this tabletop. You can do this in the, in the mixers at home. I just wanna show how easy it is to, um, to mix and talk about the nuances of it. Our ravioli dough starts with whole eggs. And so uh, whole eggs, we're after the egg whites. And those egg whites um, contain a, a lot of protein. And those proteins, everyone has heard of gluten, right? Gluten is kind of the en enemy of some, uh, some diets, right? Um, this, uh, this particular recipe, we want to have it come out like a rubber band, right? And that rubber band deals with gluten strands. All flour contains gluten, right? Uh, so here we have um, uh, flour, egg, whole eggs for the protein content, egg yolks for the fat content, and a, all, a lot of the flavor comes from that and it kind of enriches the dough. Um, a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. And so, What's that? So, uh, uh, so this is a, a, a single origin flour, and th this uh, team is um, uh, a part of Zero Food Print. Um, so this, is, this is a uh, Sonora, um, a white Sonora. Um, double Zero Flour. Has anyone heard of Double Zero Flour? Double Zero Flour is just denotes how fine the flour is actually ground, right? And so the finer the flour, essentially the finer the texture is in the finish. If you use AP or all-purpose flour uh, as you're like experimenting at home, it's totally fine. If, if we made double zero and AP flour, it's so nuanced in the difference of them, uh, it's somewhat hard to, to, to pick up. You just don't wanna use any coarse grain flours for, for this, right? So I'm just gonna show how easy. I have a little well, I have all my ingredients. I'm just gonna slowly expand my well and incorporate a little bit of flour into it. Th th this ratio, um, you know, there, there's nuance. It's not, it's not uh, you know, bread baking, any yeast-baked product changes on a daily basis. Anytime you work with flour, that can be true. It's probably a little less nuanced with pasta making, but if, it's rain if it rained for the last 30 days, or it's been, you know, a, a drought in, in, uh, for the last 30 days. It will change slightly, but it, it's really easy to incorporate to, uh, to together. In, in, in the restaurants, we weigh everything with uh, with gram scales just for consistency, and, and even with that, there's always a nuance to it, like uh, Chef Tom said, with humidity and, and different environmental influences. But an easy ratio for uh, our ravioli dough is one, 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 one. Uh, one cup of flour, one whole egg, one egg yolk, one teaspoon of salt, and uh, a tablespoon of olive oil. So uh, all that's in the, in the cookbook, and uh, we, we can also share that digitally. But part of the reason that we do the pasta class demo here with uh, with the bench method or what they call like the volcano method in Italy is everyone has a fork at home everyone has some sort of surface that they can mix a dough together and so uh, no excuses for making pasta at home after this <laughs> egg whites meringue pavlova uh, you name it cocktails like cocktails cocktails uh, we have a, a bar partner uh, our bar is called the Trick Dog and. They, uh, they take some of them, so. so you can start to see, you know, it feels like a wet dough. Right now we're hydrating, right? And has anyone had a piece of pizza or uh, a chunk of baguette and you're really, really chewing on it, kind of hurts your jaw? Uh, it means that the gluten was really developed, right? And you develop gluten by mixing dough. So think of gluten and it's hydrating right now as a, a, a spider web and so as those gluten strands expand they hydrate they almost unravel like tea leaves and they link on to each other anytime that you involve protein in so egg uh egg yolks a massive amount of fat fat's a lubricant 
right? And that shows up in the dough that those gluten strands are hard to, um, uh, hard to link onto each other. Brioche dough has a massive amount of fat in it. And you think of brioche, how crumbly it is, right? It's really hard to develop that gluten. We want this to be like a rubber band. If you add protein, protein from the egg whites, that protein helps stabilize the, uh, the gluten structures. And so it just makes it a little bit more rigid in it. So anytime that you're, you're, you're mixing dough, you're incorporating moisture, to develop gluten, you're kneading, right? A little, little bit extra of flour. I'm kneading this dough. As I'm kneading it, I'm just developing, I'm wrapping those, those, uh, those strands around each other. And the more and more that you need, um, the, the more gluten develops in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this around, we can all, we can all knead it. Ne kneading, just really simply, just like pick it up to a 45 degree anger, uh, angle and then use the weight of your hand. And I'm just pu pulling through and I'm just rotating the dough. And if you notice, uh, when Tom talks about gluten here, we're not developing gluten, which is kind of a misnomer in a lot of cookbooks and, uh, and, and demonstrations or cooking shows. Gluten's present in flour. It, it is the protein of flour. And so what we're doing is we're developing the gluten network is the real terminology behind it. And uh, like he said, we, we want that spider web of, of protein to be as strong as possible by, uh, by working the dough. So I, I, as I'm kneading, and I stop, you see how the dough pulls back on itself? That's already because the, the, the gluten that's already developed in it. So when it pulls back, it is really, really important with, um, I'm gonna pass this around if you wanna grab it the first time, and then you can knead it. You will have, not like that. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> she almost got voted out there. Uh, uh, the, the cooking part? You guys do the cooking part? What's that? I said, I'll come back to the eating part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, you have the easiest job, you can kind of pass it along now. Yeah. Because when you first start to knead, it's really, really easy, yeah. right? And the more and more that you knead, the more you're developing that gluten, you're creating those strands or smaller and smaller um, network that uh, it becomes tougher and tougher to, to, to mix or to knead, right? So mixing and hydrating the flour is really, really important. Developing the gluten, so the kneading process. The most important part is allowing the dough to rest. That means that uh, uh, as we develop the gluten and the density of this, uh, this spider web, if we were to try to roll this out right now, it's like a rubber band. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult. So you wanna allow the dough to rest. That means that the gluten strands can rest. They're a little less seized. And the flour itself is fully hydrated. It's, it, it's rested, yeah. So at least 30 minutes. So make your dough at least 30 minutes before you can make it a day ahead of time. Where this is a rubber band, and one, one, don't ever allow the dough to sit out because it'll start to dehydrate. And if it dehydrates, it creates like a skin on the outside of it. And then when you go to laminate it through the machine, those little dehydrated bits are, are gonna get mixed into it. And then it creates like a really granular, uh, granular pasta. So this is like a rubber band, it's really dense. For these doughs, it, it's much softer. Right, and there may be a little bit of spring to it, and, and you'll, you'll definitely see it go through the machine, uh, but, but it's a lot softer. It's, it's fully, fully hydrated dough. If I use this rolling pin, and, and this is, this is a, a, a great dough. It's not sticking to the rolling pin, and if you see there's like different hues throughout, that means because it's kneaded, it doesn't mean that it's fully mixed, right? And I wanna do the final mixing phase, and this does not seem like a big step, but it's a huge step in having a direct effect of the finished texture of the pasta, and it's laminating through the machine. So this first mix, or this first run through, is the So you see it's not really that cohesive of color. You guys see the, the yellow hues. Uh, throughout our white streaks. The, the final mixing phase uh, comes from the machine itself. And so I wanted what they call laminate. Laminating is just rolling over. This is how croissants are made. In croissants they have dough and they incorporate a ton of butter into each layer. 
We're right here. I'm gonna to start to use this. That means that it's gonna compress this dough. What was here, here, here is gonna compress itself onto it. And then that'll be the final mixing phase. Again, this doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but it has a, a, a massive uh, effect on the finished texture of the dough. So I use my rolling pin. At this point, if you feel like you need to incorporate a little bit of flour because it's sticking, you can. Um, I, I think we'll be fine today. Two to three times on each number now. Two, two to three times. We'll do a three, a quick flip giveaway. Why, why two to three times on each number? Chef, chef. <laughs> uh, so, even though we let the, the dough rest and that we know it kind of relaxed, uh, for this one it was about three hours the other way, so well, almost four hours. Even though we let it rest for four hours, we were starting to re engage that, that green in the, in the dough itself. And so, to get a true roll through of every number, we're going to go for a couple of times just to, to take care of that little bit of bounce back that might happen. So we're going for a true, uh, maybe we start at one. Oh, we start at one. Uh, these start at seven. Seven, yeah. okay. So we're going to get a true seven by rolling it three, two one. or three times before we go to six. So it's just ensuring that that little bit of food that's going to open up is, uh, is going to be popular. So that elasticity, that rubber band, when you roll up, it'll feed back a little bit the second time, it'll relax a little bit more. Great question. If you, um, when I first laminated the dough, again, that, that, there, there's kneading in that, right? And so if I, if I laminated the dough twice, I did that, I fold it back onto itself, that dough, anytime I touch this dough, uh, it, it's gonna wanna seize like a rubber band. And so you can over laminate. Right. If I laminated it twice, that means it, it, it seeds up a lot. Can you over roll? Not necessarily, but you can, if, anytime the dough is not covered, it's going to want to dehydrate for a certain level. So if I was doing this process for 30 minutes, I would end up with a really, really dry dough. These, these machines are automated. But we say when you're using a hand crank machine, which is great, they'll, 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 they'll do the same uh, the same thing here. But the faster that you roll, and so the faster the guy use this machine, the faster it shoots through. This is the cookbook giveaway. I'm keep trying. <laughs> the faster that you roll through, do you end up with uh, uh, thinner or thicker pasta? Thinner. Is that thicker? Thicker. Are you already going to get good Okay. <laughs> The faster it goes through, right, the less time it spends compressing, and it's going to want to snap back. But the, the longer, so when you're hand rolling, you just want to do what's comfortable, but you want to do it consistently, right? Um, so if you do it really fast at the beginning versus really slow at the end, there's going to be variance to the dough. Does everyone feel confident in taking the dough at their stations? Let's start to de, uh, define the four stations. And then we're going to roll, let's do twice on each number. And I'm stopping on seven right now. So one person can be feeding, one person can be uh, um, uh, receiving. I want to make sure that I uh, this dough will want to work, right? And so I, if I use my knuckles and I'm holding up this dough, it starts to work there, right? You guys can see that? And so I just want to make sure that I'm keeping this dough as flat as possible, right? Even when I'm folding it over and I'm giving it an a entry, I'm just keeping it flat, just kind of shaking my hand to kind of roll it over. Do you want to feel good about this? This is the easy part. <laughs> it gets really, really complicated after this. And we're gonna we're gonna roll today. We're gonna do essentially a bunch of field or raviolis with this, and then we're gonna make porchetti, which is one of the more difficult noodles that we make. Here. Yeah. So so we'll stop at seven.
Yeah. Up, upwards at, at the restaurant, we, we do upwards of like 25 feet. Our, our butcher block is like 12 feet long. And then we roll out double the size of that. So like 24, 25, 26 feet of dough at, 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 uh, at a time. Yeah. Um, so question on that. You know, in cold kitchen, you don't have as big a countertop. So does uh, it matter if you cut them and make it shorter? So I, I wouldn't cut. You can stay concentrated. Anytime I move long dough, I'm just trying to center my, myself on that dough. Uh -huh. And I can pick this up, right? And that's how we do it with 24 feet of, of dough. It's, we don't roll out 24 feet because we have 12 feet to, to We do it for the next phase of actually making the ravioli. We we'll line up the, the table. So if I have a small little table here, you're just, keep, you're just keeping your dough folded over. You need three, three feet to make to make muscle. So I feed this. I don't need. I don't need to expand this this out. And so you can see, like I'm not taking up a lot of room on the table. That's more about fabricating the finished ravioli. And one thing about the farm water pasta recipe is our recipe is much drier than most cookbook uh, or online recipes. And the reason is you can do like a, we don't want to add any uh, <laughs> we call bench flour when we're rolling this out. So if we start with the driest dough possible then we're not adding, which you, you didn't see uh, Chef Tom add a bunch of flour. And so that also helps with being able to fold it on the table, it's not gonna stick. What happens is if, as you're rolling out the, the pasta dough and you're adding a bunch of flour to the outside, that's unincorporated flour. And so you go to cook that, that, that starch gelatinizes in the boiling water and you get a little slick of unincorporated flour. So if you've ever been to a restaurant that like has that one quintessential pasta on the menu, but they're not necessarily pasta focused, and it has a little bit of a, like a, a almost like a film, like a slickness to it, it's because they're using a lot of flour on the outside. So by starting with a really, really dry dough, we don't have to incorporate additional flour to the recipe. You do not want excess flour. Like it makes amazing videos if you're like, you know, throwing flour <laughs> throughout the air. LeBron it makes is. terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible work. I do this down on purpose, like abusing and not taking care of the, the dough, it's warping, right? And so I want to make sure if I try to unravel this in so many different warps and creases, right? You always want to work with the dough and then we'll try to bring this guy back. You you want to try to keep it as flat as possible. So overlap is okay, but you want to always work with flat dough. You never want to like be able to pull and, and, and go for that. <clears throat> there, there's, there's two different types of dough. We're just working with the ravioli dough. Everyone has one. If you want to, at the very beginning, after laminating, dust it with a little bit of flour. That's totally fine. It might be a little easier to work with. Four, six, 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 six. So, so seven, why we stop there is that there's no... Uh, you can see the... I know. Good. 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 Starting point. This is our um, this is our glue for the, for the pasta, right? I don't. We have the nuance and, and the flavor profile of the dough, the filling itself. We are anti egg wash. Most Italians, and Italian is a hard thing to talk about because everyone has a grandma somewhere that will argue. <laughs> and so I'm not judging anyone's anyone's home or the way that it was taught. But egg wash, when it's boiled, tends to be really eggy, right? And so I just want glue. I just want to finish the. Uh, uh, I just want to use it as, a, as glue. This spritzing is really easy to, 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 um, to, to create glue and over spritzing is a thing. So don't, the, the dough will start to become really, really tacky. But for this one, we can do two shapes real quick. Cause we are, cause I do want to make it more, more 
Uh, it's important that the, the triangle, triangle that's formed, I start at the top and everyone can see that those two air channels, right? That's really, really important. Hot air expands. If you trap too much air inside of this pasta, when it hits boiling water, it will expand and it's called a popper. That's a really, really bad thing. So just start at the top and work your way down, right? To form that. We have fluted, fluted cutters here. This could be on itself. A lot, some reasons call this a panzotti or a triangoli. I can come back and create a, a, a fluted edge on it. And if you want to make trianglis like that, it's going to be magically delicious. If you want to do phase two of the class, you can make what we call a, a tortelletti. So triangle is facing your belly. The, the flat is away. And what I'm doing here is I'm just combining the two corners. I'm pinching and then I'm going straight down. So it forms a little, little tortelletti. So you can do a triangle, right? Divide this up. If you guys want to divide this up into thirds, there's knives, people can cut squares, uh, try to get to a triangle. And then you can form triangle, you can do the fluted cutter, or you can do a tortelletti and me and Ryan are, are here to, to go around and help. Let's bust this out because we are late.